Hi, welcome. Uh, today I'm interviewing Martijn Dielemans. Uh, Martijn is a spiritual life coach, you're an author, you're an uh, ex-Olympian volleyball player. So uh, I'm super excited. We're going to talk about uh, spiritual stuff, non-dualism, uh, love and all kinds of <laughs> other yumminess. Other yumminess. <laughs> yumminess. <laughs> so welcome. Thank you. Thank you for, for having me. It's yeah. A, it's an honor. I'm excited. Yeah. So, um, yeah. C can you tell us a little bit about your spiritual journey? Wow. Yeah. So the, so the interview is going to be like three hours. Yeah. Right? <laughs> well, just do the cliff notes version, okay? Well, uh, it's really quick. It started in 2010, really, you know, uh, before I was a professional volleyball player and I was really focused on that. Mm -hmm. And then in uh, 2008, I retired and yeah. I moved to Barcelona, where I live now. And um, I met a girl in 2008. Of course, it's always the girls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and we broke up. She broke up with me in 2010. Yeah. And and that was the second time that I really ended up feeling really terrible, and I felt that I lost my entire life. Hmm. So. Uh, that's when I said, okay, this should not ever happen again. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do everything possible to, to avoid that in the future. Mm -hmm. And that's when I really started to dig into myself and to learn more about myself. And I started to, to read books from Wayne Dyer. He's like my hero. And um, I got in touch with uh, the, the documentary The Secret from mm -hmm. Rhonda Byrne. I think that's what most people get in touch with when they start this, right? So Me too. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't surprise me at all, you know? So, and that's what really got me started. And then uh, I, I got in touch with different kinds of therapies and I studied them and I be became a kinesiologist. I became a life coach, crystal therapist even. Okay. And um, although I, I don't do anything of that at the moment, I don't use anything that I learned, but it was extremely helpful to become who I am today. And then uh, in 2016, I had uh, another relationship, which was a complete eye opener. Um, and it really opened me up to, to discover what I believe to be reality at this moment. Mm -hmm. And, and that really brought me here and really brought me in the journey of becoming a spiritual teacher or coach or whatever you want to call it. And um, that's basically how I got here. It's all through um, learning about myself and really digging into who I am, trying to find out what I'm doing here and, and how is this all possible and, and why am I suffering so much? And then through the suffering, I found another way to live life. Yeah. And that's how I came here. And I, I am trying to share that now with other people so they can see what I see. Okay. I'm going to ask a lot of questions about that later. <laughs> but what I'm curious at, because if you are a professional athlete, then yeah, that life is pretty tough. You know, it's you have to sacrifice a lot. You have to train every day. You have to have lots of discipline. Mm -hmm. You have to go the extra mile and then the extra mile and the extra mile. But and your spiritual journey wasn't started then yet, right? Or did you have a sense that there was more? I or? was always a little bit different. Mm -hmm. I, I was always, even when I... My focus was very different. Yeah. When I was a little boy, I remember I was eight years old. And, um, and and my dad was always really... I have a twin brother, so mm -hmm. he was also playing volleyball. And, and my dad always... He, he was also our coach a few years. And, and he brought us to games and trainings and practices. And my mom was there. And so it was a whole family thing. And... Uh, at one point, my father organized, together with the, the club that, that he was involved with, he organized like, um, like some sort of workshop with the national team from Holland at that moment. Mm -hmm. And we were big followers of, of the national team and other national teams. And they were upcoming before they, they won the Olympic gold in, in 96. And um, so for us, they were like famous people. 
And I was like, wow, look at him. Oh, he's there. We can touch him. And then that was, that day was ended. And we came home and I, I told my parents, one day I will play in the national team. Mm. I was eight years old. Yeah. Like now I see eight-year-old boys and I'm like, oh, they're just throwing See, a ball with yeah. friends and it's, they don't think about that stuff you know so i i think i always had a different focus and from that moment on that was my only focus in life mm. and of course my dad and my, my mom they were extremely helpful and they really supported everything uh, did everything for for us for my brother and i to make that happen and um yeah from then that moment on i was improving 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 and so i always felt i had a different maybe a different capacity to mm -hmm. focus on things mm -hmm. then i when i was 10 years old i had like out of body experience which was not everybody has that you know i had high fever and i saw myself from above mm -hmm. and i told my parents and they were, they were like yeah yeah <laughs> but i know i, I that happened I, I still know i still am 100 percent convinced so there were things, you know, yeah. and I always had this, this question in my mind, what am I doing and what is the real purpose? And of mm -hmm. course, at the start, I was like, oh, my purpose is to be a famous world star volleyball player, you know? Yeah. Uh, but then when that crashed after a few years completely and my whole career crashed in within a few years when I was still very young. Um, that's, what, what, what happened? For everyone who doesn't know. <laughs> well, I really... I got a contract when I was 20 years old in Spain. It was really my first big contract. It was in 1999. And I went to play for the Spanish champion. That's how I ended up in Spain as well. Mm -hmm. And in that season, it was my best season ever. Um, but in that season, I also got to be, you know my first girlfriend, with who I was for six years. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, I said it's, it's, it's always the girls. Yeah. <laughs> but it, blame blame us. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. No, not at all. She was a fantastic girlfriend. She mm -hmm. was probably probably the best girlfriend that I've ever had in terms of how the relationship went. It was six years. It was peaceful. She was always supporting. But we just grew apart. Yeah. But in that first two three years. Like before, I was always focused on volleyball and being the best in the world and, and just becoming better and better and better. But now I had something else that I had to take care of in my life. And I, I started to feel responsibility, hmm. responsibility for another person, which I never had felt before. So, and that really screwed up my mind a lot. Hmm. It was like I couldn't handle the pressure of having to take care of someone else. Of course, that was all imagined. I, in my imagination, I never, she never told me, hey, you have to take care of me. No, not at all. She was completely capable to do that for herself. But I felt that. And then I had a, a small sh shoulder injury and that got worse and worse and worse. So my confidence went down a lot. My level went down. And that's how within a few years, my career crashed down mm -hmm. completely. And I ended up retiring at like, I think I was 29 years old after many, many years of suffering basically and earning a, a low salary and just getting by and so already in the last like five six years of my volleyball career i was already like searching for other ways yeah. to make a living and to to really keep that freedom that i had uh but i i didn't know how to do it so you know when they always say that that uh, athletes when they finish their career they end up in a black hole yeah I didn't know I was in it, but I've been in a black hole for like 15 years. It was wow. very depressing, very difficult time. Yeah. But you're not in that black hole anymore. <laughs> well, you know, I don't feel like that anymore, no. no. But maybe in five years I'll tell you, oh, that was a black hole. Yeah. You, you know when you did that interview? Yeah. Yeah, you never know. But no, I feel like when I compare myself with 10 years ago, that's when in 2010, basically, that this my whole journey, spiritual journey, really started consciously. Mm -hmm. um, I feel so different and so much more in control of my emotions and myself. And and also, even when you when you look at pictures, okay, I had more hair back then, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but 
but I I do believe that I that I that I look even younger and more healthy than than I did back then. But back then I was still just I was very much closer to being a professional athlete than I am now. But yeah. you know, so well being on the inside also shows in, shows on the outside normally. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And what are the um, biggest spiritual truth? you discovered that guided you to from that place to being in this spot right now following your purpose feeling having this sense of freedom created yeah. this for yourself well you know there, there and and this it, it comes down to always the same thing now which i didn't know until maybe two years ago more or less um, before like in my early period, I was really more trying to learn so much from Wayne Dyer, Eckhart Tolle, and, and things like that, and and try to live in the now, and yeah. which is quite okay. It can really help, but there was always something that that didn't satisfy me. You know, and in in many spiritual beliefs and and, and teachings, it said we are all one, and they also say that. Uh, what is this right and it's explained that it's god experiencing itself himself mm -hmm. and and those responses were like i didn't really it didn't resonate with me and of course I, it was something new it was like so for a year i would say yeah we we are god consciousness that is experiencing itself or we are consciousness expanding we are we are here to learn and to expand our consciousness and but then i always came to a point was like that's not the answer, you know, it's, it's not why I'm here. How is, how is it possible that I'm here? And, and what is the purpose of being here? So then when uh, two years ago, or three, almost three years ago now, I really had this experience that it really showed me who I really was myself. And that I entered in a, a new dark phase. Uh, well, what was the experience? Um, well, another relationship. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was actually my the last relationship that I mm -hmm. really had. It was a short one, and, and this is also... Um, that's what I started to make videos about on YouTube. Mm -hmm. That's how most people got to know me through the Twin Flame concept. Okay. And I, I don't really resonate with it anymore so much, but... Too much labels. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it is true that, that that experience with her, like I could see myself through her. Mm -hmm. And um, you see so many shadow sides of yourself that, uh, and I'm sure that happened to her as well. And, and we made a promise to each other that we would work on, on ourselves. Uh, back then we said to, to, to be the best version for each other. Um, and who knows? You never know if that if that might happen, right? But right now, I see it more like I made a promise to her, but also to myself. To yourself, yeah. So it was. It's been a lot, like two, three years of really discovering who I really was, mm -hmm. and through looking at your shadow sides and and your little addictions and just habits that are nasty habits mm -hmm. that, that just don't serve your, your well-being at all. Uh, I came to discover that we truly are all one, but not as it's been explained in the yeah. spiritual beliefs. And that's how I came in, in on the path of pure non-dualism through A Course in Miracles, which is a book uh, which basically was written in the, in the 70s by an American lady called Helen Schuchman. And uh, it's basically a book dictated by Jesus. And um, that was the first thing that really gave me a convincing answer to the question. Uh, why are you here? Mm. What are you doing here? What is your purpose? And, and since nothing ever really could give me that answer, this, it, it sounds very unlogical, but the response to that question, what are you doing? Why are you here? The response was really, you are not here. And that was like, I got in touch with it like three years ago, like more intensively. And I was like, no, no, no. I, I feel somewhere deep inside this is true, 
but I don't want it to be true because yeah. I like to be here. I like to be here. And I even, I have a really good, my best friend, he is uh, more advanced than me in, in the Course of Miracles and these teachings. And and I, I remember telling him, we were walking somewhere close to the beach and I we were talking about this stuff. And I said, yeah, but I know you're right, what you're saying, but I like to be here. Yeah. I want to come back and do this again. Yeah. You know? And, and now, uh, a year later, a year and a half later, there has been even more suffering. And through suffering, you really can come to see that, that I don't want to come back now. Hmm. And that's when, that's also what they say, you know, people start to follow this path only when they have suffered enough. Yeah. And only people that have really, and you know, suffering is a very personal experience. Yeah. So for me, suffering has been in love. I have never been in a war or you can't compare that. Yeah. But in reality, you know, since we are not here and since this is an illusion, actually being in a war and suffering in a war is the same kind of suffering as suffering from a breakup. Yeah. Which sounds very controversial, but in, in looking at it from, <clears throat> from a, a non-dualism point of view, yeah. that's the truth. Yeah. <clears throat> so, and then, you know, the purpose. What is the purpose of being here? Well, you're not here. So there is no purpose. And, and first you really reject that idea. And uh, I had the book for a long time. And the fact is that I also had a period of two years of severe anxiety. So I would listen. I was drawn to listen to the audiobook from A Course in Miracles. And for some reason... I didn't understand what say what it was saying, but it always calmed me down. So every time every time that I was feeling bad, I would listen to the audios and it would calm me down. So I knew there was something. But then when I really started to try to understand it, I was like, no, no, no. No, I want to be Martine. I want to be an individual. And if I believe this, that means that I'm gone, that I will disappear at some point, And I don't want that. Um, but yeah, I've came to a point that, that I now really accept that at some point I will be gone. And not through death as we know it, but through enlightenment, basically. Yeah, I, and I'm curious about that. And I'm going to ask a couple of questions about that. But first I want to ask something else. Because uh, a lot of people, um, especially when it... Uh, when it comes to uh, people who follow me or people who are into reality creation or law of attraction, yeah. they want to kind of, um, they have the tendency to ignore their shadow sides. And you're talking about shadow work, you're, you're talking about growth mm -hmm. through suffering. And that's also something I experienced that um, the more you hide your shadow sides, the, the more you start to suffer mm -hmm. the more you, the less free you are so i want to talk a little bit more about that before we um, move <clears throat> on yeah. because how brave do you have to be to look at your own shadow sides you know how to not run away from yourself anymore mm -hmm. how do you experience that how what what value do you see in it and what tips do you have about it well, I think it's extremely painful to do so. That's yeah. why most people decide not to do it. Yeah. You know, and... and um, it's easier than to just do some positive affirmations, sit on the couch and look at the money rolling in on the bank account. Yeah, which never happens <laughs> no. when you do that. Exactly. <laughs> but at least they don't have to look at what's really going on, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, <clears throat> you know, I think at some point everyone will go through some experience that that will show them their shadow sides yeah whether they want it or not <clears throat> but many people actually decide to ignore it mm. and to blame other people but i think i <clears throat> i really need to drink some water <laughs> this is, maybe this is loosening up something yeah. inside me <laughs> <clears throat> but this is this is what happened to me like i i was already on that path for quite a few years yeah and what i was trying to do in those years i was trying to to shine a light on that darkness yeah 
instead of having that darkness disappear. And people say that, that where there is light, darkness cannot exist, but it's not really true. If, if, if you kind of hide the darkness somewhere deep inside of yourself, you know, you're like, oh, you see, you see the darkness, but it's like, I don't want to work with it. Yeah. I, I, I want to ignore it. And, and what you're doing is instead of actually shining a real light on it, you are, you are faking a light. It's mm -hmm. a fake light. That's how I see it. It's like uh, this f famous quote, right? Uh, whatever you resist, persist. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's absolutely true. Yeah. But that's, that's, in a nutshell, that's the whole illusion. We resist the reality of God, of oneness, of love. And that's why we're here. Yeah. <laughs> so when you ignore our seeming reality in this illusion, our shadow sides then you can never really find the true love. Yeah. It's completely impossible because you're you're hiding it away. Below the the whole you can only find it when you go through the darkness. Mm. <clears throat> so for me that it's extremely difficult to do and um, extremely painful. But do you think if you uh, let go of that it is painful that it's just, it just is. It's just emotions or feelings yeah. or stuff or experiences or it's just something else to surrender to. Do, don't you think that will, that becomes easier or is it oh, still? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, okay. of course it, it, it does become easier. You know, practice makes perfect. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and that's, <clears throat> I do believe it's true also with this. It's like you start to be able to disassociate. Yeah from the pain and from the emotions and you start to recognize that it is you yourself who is actually deciding to have those emotions mm -hmm. right so and sometimes even when you know it you still end up having those emotions and you're yeah. like okay i have a choice i have a choice to to feel bad or to feel good but consciously i still decide to feel bad because this feeling bad is somehow more comfortable than feeling good. Mm. You know, and <clears throat> this is something that um, uh, people talk about the comfort zone. And, and for me, a comfort zone is more like a pain zone. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a hidden pain zone. Yeah. Because people prefer to be in pain or in suffering, but know what they have instead of stepping out of that zone and and then discover things that are new and that is fearful because it's new. You don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. So I've been through all of that. And um, I think many people have been through that even without knowing unconsciously uh, because life just puts you in those kind of situations, yeah, exactly. whether you want it or not. Yeah. But you, you, to, really, um, to really break through that whole cycle, you have to look at the, the darkness and and see that it's not real and see that it's something that you yourself have created for yourself and that you have decided to feel and experience but if you start to look at it with an, in another way you can use it for your own growth yeah and you can use it to to undo it basically see, does that make sense uh, a little bit yeah <laughs> 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 yeah but yeah, the, it's it's fascinating because well, I I said uh, I was in my head thinking about how fascinating it was, uh, also because what I think what questions also come up is, okay, you have non-dualism, you know, you you have oneness. It's your well, it's not a goal, but you you feel that. Do I say a pool to experience that, to step into that? But how do you combine that with your 3D life? You know, you yeah, also, that's... you have a business, you are writing a book, and uh, maybe you have personal goals still, I don't know. You have your uh, rent that has to be paid, you know? So <laughs> I, I think that for most of my clients, those are questions that they have. It's, yeah, you have these spiritual truths, but how do 
how do I combine that with still also being a yeah. human being and living in this uh, reality and and having the um, illusion that they have to confirm somehow? Mm -hmm. That's that's very difficult. And yeah. I, you know, it's it's still. I wouldn't say it's a struggle anymore. But it has been until just a few weeks ago, actually. Uh, like the few weeks I really experienced a, a new type of sensation that I had. That, mm. that I'm really more capable of surrendering. And now, for sure, tomorrow something happens that, that shows me the proof that it's not true. That I still have mm, problems to, to actually surrender no, to. No, I right? think but you always reach a deeper level. Of course. And uh, the... Um the development always goes the same you have to walk into stuff you don't want to experience or give you pain to reach that next level mm -hmm. you know so because if you say that then i'll then maybe people will get get the idea oh maybe one day i'm in a state that i'm th that nothing matters anymore and maybe they will reach it but mm. it might take a long time or it lifetimes might... lifetimes yeah <laughs> exactly so yeah. it, i don't want to give people the idea of like this golden pill uh, that if you know this or do this then everything no this is this is the journey it's hard but work I, I want to give them i do want to give them some tools to make that easier and more fun and more you know it, it, yeah. so I, so continues know, it's, <laughs> it's um there is no magic pill there no. is no secret to this it's just very hard work except in the secret <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that's a good thing to start with you know but yeah. it's very basic and, yeah. and there's just some things that i i right now i, I don't agree with that anymore but um it's really hard work it's yeah. very hard work. You have to be very disciplined and very self-aware. Yeah. And you have to be extremely vigilant of your own thoughts. So I think that's the most difficult thing. Um, so if it's that difficult uh, and it's that hard, why do you do it? Because it's the only thing that brings me true peace. Cool. And and that's, <clears throat> that's the thing, you know. People ask me or tell me, but this, it, this can't be true. It's like, I, I can touch this, I can feel this, it's real to me. Yeah, to me it is too. I'm still a human being, or at least I believe to be one. But I, and I come back to the suffering again. Yeah. Only people that have suffered enough mm -hmm. will take the step. Otherwise, yeah. you will continue, continue to search for solutions within this illusion outside of yourself. But the solution is never outside of yourself. I like that. Do you yeah. know, that's the thing. You always search for, or you go to therapies, you know, or a psychotherapist, or, and it's perfect. They do great jobs until a certain point. They will never solve your problem. Mm. But the, because the problem is inside of you. Yeah. And they might show you some things inside of you, but as long as you trust other people to solve your own problems, it will never happen. No. So... And you also have to understand that the problem you believe to have is not the real problem. The real problem is that you believe that you are real. Yeah. That's the real problem. And, and that sounds very unlogical and very difficult to grasp and to understand. And that's why I understand your question perfectly. Like, okay, but we are here. So how to do this? How to mm. combine that truth that everybody knows deep inside? Someone will recognize it. Most will not. Yeah. But... At some point in one life or another, they will recognize it. Yeah, uh, most of my clients, I think they already do. They already have the sense there's more. I'm part of something bigger. I have, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling guided. I, I'm, yeah, I'm curious yeah. of what. I think everybody has the question, you know, why yeah. are we here? What is our purpose? Yeah. And, and I do believe that many people at some point we'll come to the same point as I have come and find that there is no real answer except for we're not here. Yeah. So, but how to combine that? Because, damn it, we are here, right? Yeah. That's what we believe. That was what, what we experience. We need to pay our rent. That's what you said before. Uh, we need to eat. We need to breathe. Yeah. So how to do that? Well, there is, for me, there is two things. 
you you only it's very simple you know that's that's what what i always say is very simple it's the most simple teaching that exists but it's also probably the most difficult one to to put in practice but you always have only two options so that makes it very easy in life we believe that we have many options but the only options that we really have is do you look at it with the ego which is basically the thing that created all of this for yeah. us <laughs> or do you look at it with love with the holy spirit which is the same you know i don't want to fall in into religious context because even though when we speak about god or the holy spirit they have nothing to do with religion at mm -hmm. all so it's more uh, from a love perspective but not in a, in a love perspective as we as we perceive love here yeah it's it's the true love with the capital l love yeah. <laughs> you know so when you start to look at things with love from through the eyes of the holy spirit you don't see reality anymore with the with the small r you see reality with the capital r you see the reality of god you see the the love of god and that doesn't mean that you see love in everything you know when there is a war when people are killed you still see that but what you see is that that is not really happening that that is just a projection of the ego mind to escape from love mm. and this is what it's a beautiful phrase from a course in miracles uh, i have put it on my website because i love it so much and it says our our task is not to search for love but to seek and find all the barriers that we have uh, put up against it mm. You know, and that's, we come back to the shadow side. That's, those are the barriers that we have put up in ourselves to, to escape from the true love. Because when we find true love, what it means is that we disappear as an individuality, as, as, an, as an individual person, as a personality, as Martin, as Martin, you know. So we disappear. And that's very, that's a very threatening idea to us. To yeah, the ego. Th that's fascinating because um, everyone, well, you cannot search for love, but that's the way people describe it. Everyone wants love or wants to be loved, wants to be, the, uh, that what, what, want to experience that, but mm -hmm. everyone is running away from it at the same time, exactly for this yeah. reason also, because if you really experience and understand unconditional love then your ego what do you say happens to your ego it dissolves or what what's well, what's you know, the theory the, the, behind that for me the thing is that uh, we don't really know what love is no. here here uh, do because you, do love you think we never can experience unconditional or true love no. while on earth i i don't believe that love is can be found here in this world mm. we can somehow experience love but it happens in our mind because when we start to look at the world the physical world from reality from the holy spirit from love from true love that's when we can see it also here but it doesn't mean that we need to glorify that what we see here in physic in physicality so it's not like um, I'm not going to glorify my partner and be dependent on my partner because I love her so much. But then you know, you're that's... talking about romantic love. Yeah. Uh, weren't we talking about like a bigger love? Yeah, I get course. it that also, we project I mean, it on people and stuff and things. And, and, but exactly. it is something else, you know, just being in, in love is only projecting your feelings or the love you already have onto a person mm -hmm. but what's what's the next step what's the next stage uh, you know i i think and this is also something that has been explained in the course of miracles that that love is something that that we really cannot understand with our dualistic mind yeah because it is oneness yeah it is god god is perfect love you know and and, and in heaven which is the place, you know, it's not a real place, but that's where God is. There's only being love created and shared, and it's just one place of love. And 
it is just so something that is we, we cannot conceive what it really is in our minds we, we I don't think we can have we can experience like a glimpse of it mm -hmm. when we start to look through the eyes of love with the Holy Spirit on t in, into our world but we what we many times forget and I also sometimes forget it I'm on this path of non-dualism but who is the I yeah that is on that path the I that is on that path is just this tiny fall small fragment of that illusion too so so that means that I as a small part a fragment within that illusion can never really experience everything at the same time here because as long as i believe to be i then there is always something that is keeping me away from experiencing true oneness true love mm -hmm. because when i experience that i do not exist anymore yeah. so that's why i'm 100 percent convinced that love cannot be found in this world huh. love can be experienced in the mind but it cannot be seen here because everything we see here physically is the is like the consequence of running away from love so when you stop running away from love you stop seeing this yeah so if we are saying that the problem is or the problem is inside of us the answers are inside of us so maybe the one thing that people can do or the the thing where we can share with them is how they can access that wisdom what can they do from day to day to get those answers for themselves yeah. what do you do and what can they do it's you know it, it's not it, it is complicated because um you have to come first to a, a certain self-awareness to understand that that's true and our first reaction before coming in that to that stage is actually to push it away mm -hmm. and yeah. to say it's it, the solution is not in me and that's why i go to a psychologist to a psychotherapist to a yeah. therapist to that's why Watch i go the interview with, with Marcia and martin yeah <laughs> well you know but but those things and that's don't why. turn off turn us off <laughs> <laughs> but but you know that's why it's it's a good thing they they can push you in the right direction but they will never solve anything for yeah. you they can they can serve as an eye opener mm -hmm. but to really be, be able to discover that truth within yourself you have to be willing to look at yourself and most people say that they are willing but they know they are not i've been there and that's why i say that and i've been i have rejected those thoughts and those those words from other people that said the same thing to me it's like no 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 i said yes but I, I meant no so you first have to be really honest with yourself yeah and you have to understand that although i i don't i'm not a, a believer that we create anything we are the own we are the owner of our own decisions mm -hmm. so we decide how to feel and you are not the victim of what somebody else did to you because when you perceive yourself as a victim it is you who feels that you are a victim yeah it's not it has nothing to do what the other person did to you or the situation did to you or that thing that happened at work it is how you perceive it so i i always come back to the same quote from wayne dyer he it was something that was really impactful in my life many many years ago he said when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Mm -hmm. So when you change the way you look at yourself and you start to take responsibility for how you feel, instead of blaming other people for how you feel, then you are much, much closer to be able to really look at yourself and to see and discover what is going on. But to really find the answers, you first have to look at the shit. You have to look at the darkness. You have to look at the shadows. And what many people do when they are on a spiritual path, you know, I, I met so many people, is, and there's nothing wrong with it. I did that too. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm not uh, blaming them. I'm not judging them. I'm just 
trying to say that it's a phase where people go through and they say uh, oh you're you're such a beautiful light light is oh, everywhere thank you <laughs> <laughs> but light is everywhere where you are you know and but it's like a fake un- fake it until you make it mentality mm. and when you fake something deep inside of yourself you know you're faking so instead of faking look at what is real real within the illusion but for us it's a reality so look at that darkness look at your failures and 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 look at what is really making you bad and and understand that it is you or making you feel bad and and understand that it is you that is making yourself feel bad and once you are at that point then you can really start to take control over your own emotions yeah. and it's not that easy it sounds very easy but it's not it took me many many years to get to a point where i kind of control it more or less yeah. you know and um there's still many days that i don't really control it but i'm aware of it yeah you know so at the end of the day i always come back and i lay in my bed and I'm like okay how did i feel today how did my day go and um then i i i review the day and i look at myself and it's okay i'm not really feeling good today what happened why is that at what point during the day did i start to decide to look at my life and what is happening to me or in my life from an ego perspective mm-hmm. from a victim perspective from a a suffering perspective and and usually i i am able to find that moment and that's something that i can recommend to everyone you know it's like be self aware and take responsibility of of how you feel and know that it is you that is making you feel like that i think that's the first first step convince yourself of that truth uh, because as long as you're not convinced you will st- you will continue to blame other people and as far as i know i don't know anyone who brought success in their life by blaming other people no you know so in the end um it doesn't help you it doesn't help anyone uh and being kind being loving so another quote you know it, it comes from a course in miracles but wayne dyer uses it a lot too do you want to be right or do you want to be happy yeah i i know that one do you want to be right or do you want to be free it's yeah. just, it comes down well, to the yeah, same thing exactly. yeah. It's, yeah it comes down to the same thing i think when you choose love you are free yeah. but you also set other people free because yeah. you're not blaming them anymore and you're not making them responsible anymore for how you feel yeah. and that's also something that happens in love relationships special love relationships when we project our love onto other people or specific people you know we make them responsible and and they they have to make us happy mm-hmm. no that it doesn't work that way you share maybe a common journey and and you like to be around each other you support each other but she is responsible of her own happiness mm-hmm. and i am responsible of my own happiness yeah you know and and um i think that way you become more compassionate for other people yeah. because people they all have their own life they all have their own life path we don't really know what they have gone through even if we know their whole life story we have not been inside of them we have not felt what they felt and and for what for me could be something that is nothing that is not important to me at all and and doesn't have any meaning and does wouldn't hurt myself to someone else it could be extremely traumatic so judging other people on what happened to them and all oh, look at how that person is suffering but nothing happened to him or her it it doesn't help anyone either you know no. so non-judgment don't judge other people always try to be be loving and helpful and useful to other people if if there's nothing that is useful that comes out of your mouth just yeah. shut up yeah exactly yeah. and i'm sometimes i'm not good at that but <laughs> <laughs> but i try to and yeah. i i do recognize that more and more i get to a stage that uh, that i am capable of being more loving and more useful to other people and to myself yeah Because but you you also can't always um 
how do you say that um, y you have no control about how people interpret what you share with them. You could have the best intentions and people could be uh, disappointed or mad or sad, mm -hmm. you know, so you, you're not, you don't have any control ab about their feelings. Oh, that's also. true. But, but, and sometimes that's difficult to, to handle yeah. because, you know, you, you feel sometimes maybe a little bit offended because, Hey, I only try to help. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's your ego again. Yeah, <laughs> it is, of course, but it's, it's, it's definitely true. And, um, uh, there's also another thing that is for me, it becomes more and more powerful. And that's anger is never justified. Yeah. Never. Even when someone kills someone else. Because we come back to the the real final only truth that exists. Yeah. Is that this is not real. This is an illusion. Yeah. So when someone kills someone else, it, it's very extreme. Um, but it's the same thing as, uh, as me having a party and getting drunk with someone else. It's exactly the same thing. You know, so in the end, there is no good and bad because yeah. both do not exist. Yeah, and I get what you say when you say that. And I think a lot of people won't understand that. I know. I, that, I've been there. Yeah. Two years ago, someone would tell me and I was like, come on, man. And it, this doesn't mean that you shouldn't uh, uh, bring that uh, uh, assassin to court. Yeah. It doesn't mean that he shouldn't go to jail. No, and, exactly. and, and that justice, as we know it within this within our world should not exist yeah. I'm not saying that at all it happens in your mind love happens in the mind oneness happens in the mind yeah. it's a decision that you take so of course this is something that I always talk about with my clients as well you know they ask so how should I put this into practice if everything is, is not real nothing is real that is happening yeah, why here why should I even bother yeah exa <laughs> exactly so, you know, so, so when you are crossing a, a street and a car is uh, coming with 100 kilometers per hour and, and if you don't run you're going to die uh, of course you run you're not saying oh this is not real just kill me you know or, or if there is a, a robber coming into your house at night and he's threatening you with a knife do something defend yourself you know, be normal. Uh, be and, normal. Yeah, yeah. Be, you know, it's it's we have our instincts. With this is inherent to being here within this illusion, yeah. to having or believing to have a physical body, and that's why, like, it doesn't matter how this illusion shows up in form. It it really matters what you do in your mind with what shows up in form. So, it it doesn't matter if you do certain things that contradict your belief in oneness otherwise we would all stop to breathe yeah. which we would stop to eat it would function for 15 seconds yeah <laughs> and only <Exactly. gasps> because we need to breathe yeah to be here as and long as we still have this body exactly yeah. but and that's why it takes many many years you know it, like it could happen in an instant yeah. from the medical metaphysical point of view but we are here with a dualistic mindset. We are, I am now even explaining all of this in words, yeah. which in itself is already dualistic. Yeah, and, and limited. Exactly. Yeah. So everything that you give a word to is limiting already. Yeah. That's what you're describing. Yeah. You know, so be normal. Uh, try to defend yourself. Try to eat healthy. Yeah. Uh, exercise. It's something that I have ignored for, for over a year. And now I finally, I'm a few months into doing exercise, I feel better than ever, you know? So that's important. Make yourself feel good. Treat yourself well within the illusion. Yeah. But in your mind, know that it's an illusion. Yeah. It happens in your mind. It is a decision in your mind. And at some point, and I, I come back to the suffering, only people that have suffered enough, that, that, have, that, that are fed up with how life is mm -hmm. for everyone. In the end, it's for everyone. You could be a millionaire, you could have 10 houses, 15 cars, uh, be famous, whatever. Everyone suffers, yeah. you know, and maybe one lifetime seems to be better than another. But as I said before, good and bad is both the same. Yeah. Good and bad both do not exist. So in the end, also the good, the good needs to be looked at as something that is not real. 
if you want to really go back home. And only once you have suffered I, enough... Is that the goal, going back home? For me it is. And, and what does home mean? Wow. Can we schedule a second interview? Yeah, I think we should because... <laughs> How can we round it up? Because I want to ask questions about that and about that and about that. But just end with this. What's going home, home for you? Going home for me means that uh, I, I really recognize who I really am. Hmm. And that is going back to, to God, to perfect love, to oneness. And that means that I disappear. That means that I disappear. But it's, it is the place where I will be and where everyone will be when we have broken down the last barrier to who we really are, which is love. Mm. You know, coming back to that phrase, our, our true task here is to, to seek and find the barriers that keep us from finding the love, but not even finding the love because you don't have to find what you really are. Yeah. So you have to find what, what you are not. And that's what I'm always saying, you know. People think that in life, you know, when they start the spiritual path, that they have to create something or they have to do something or they have to learn something. But for me, this whole path is about unlearning, undoing and destroying. And that sounds very contradictory, but you have to destroy who, who you are not to really find who you really are. Yeah, yeah, but but I get it. And I, I, I guess I think my my listeners do too. And it's what we said before. This is like really complicated spiritual stuff and we give words to it mm. and those words are always limiting yeah. but I, I think they can feel the essence of it I think they can feel the truth of it and I think um, yeah that sums it up the return to love yeah you know I think everyone recognizes the truth in, in, in this. It's not me who is saying that. I, no. I also learned that from other people, yeah. you know, and from other teachings. But because we carry it in, in, inside of ourselves, the truth, it can never be undone. Yeah. So we carry that inside of ourselves. And, and that's why there's also such a fierce rejection by many people when they first find these teaching. They're like, oh, no, 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 no. I want, I want this not to be real. Mm. But how... You wouldn't reject it with so much power if you wouldn't believe there's something of truth yeah, in that. Yeah, exactly. You know, otherwise you wouldn't just say, "Oh, he's crazy." Yeah. You just well, skip it, to the it, next it video. It doesn't matter. Or, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So everyone knows this truth. Yeah. Being it consciously or not. So yeah, in, in the end, everyone will walk this path in one way or another. Yeah. So yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> okay. Thank you, more time. I really enjoyed it. We have to stop here, but <laughs> maybe a part two isn't such a, a, a bad idea. So thank you for watching and thank you for listening. And uh, have an amazing day. Ciao, guys. It's a pleasure.